Welcome to my review of Magi Ranger Part 7. I finally made it to Disc 2. Sorry I'm a little late posting this. Things have been crazy. And yes, I have one of these now, and I still have no idea how to use it. But without further ado, let's go talk about wizards now! A demon steals Kai's courage, making it so he can no longer transform. When his teammates are in trouble, he must remember where real courage comes from and save the day. No one slick like Gaston, no one steals like Gaston, no one's confusingly a thief fish like Gaston. He needs a hug, you guys. He's, he's like over on the other side of the room and they're all just coldly ignoring him and then he curls up on the floor and starts crying. Like, when is someone going to give him a hug? The bad guy killed a dog. At the beginning, he's stealing things that are important to people. He steals a guy's wig, he steals a woman's dog and then he steals Kai's courage and in this scene we see purple wizard throwing the courage into this big melting pot where he's like I gotta put all the important stuff in here to make important dynamite so I can blow up all the humans and we see as the courage ball falls down in there the chomping blades of doom that destroy it very brutally and in the next scene he has the dynamite he's made out of all of the important things including the dog that he threw into that giant bladed pot of death. He killed a dog. A brief moment to rejoice in how excited Nye and May are to pilot a Zord. It's cute. Okay, so this is really interesting because he punches the ticket with his teeth, which means that you don't need the ticket puncher to punch the ticket. You could punch it with anything. Is he able to punch the ticket with his teeth because he's already like a magical being? And like if a normal person bit one of these, it wouldn't summon a train? I need answers. So Kai says, Bispoo! And all the little balls of important stuff go back to the people. But here's the thing. Is that dog alive again? Or is just like some chunkies going back to the owner? The wizards are mad at Smokey for pulling pranks. After Nye and May are given magi phones, they use their magic to frame Smokey for an even bigger prank. When no one believes him, he runs away. Urara goes looking for Smokey as he will disappear if outside his lamp for too long. Together, Urara and Smokey save the day. But this is clearly not meant to sell a toy. How they're just like holding it in frame. You could just see her hand holding it really crisply in the frame while he talks about it and why is her first move to turn her into a centipede when they didn't like it so much the first time like why you gotta be a dick to your friend y'all Smokey just farted on everybody and it was like an escape technique like he used the fart to propel himself out of the room and it also created like smoke cover so no one could follow him like damn he just pecked the fuck out of her this kind of shit is my jam Smokey's like I got no time left the curse had rules we have reached the time limit I am disappearing and then he's just like no I'm not going to like he reforms his own body with sheer like piss and vinegar and willpower and I'm like you get it man fucking get it Smokey done chopped that bird's beak right off right off their face I talked about this in like episode two, but I cannot take the sad scenes seriously because they are underscoring them with a slowed down version of Maji 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 da. And it just, I'm just like, America, fuck yeah. <laughs> grab her chest on purpose it's totally an accident so it's, it's really kind of not cool that she punches him across the room but it is very in keeping with Urara's character like crazy face and the punch that's there that's her crazy side showing um but why'd they write why would they write why would they write that why is that there why does that happen a demon cuts the wizard's familial bond, leaving only Makito and Hikaru-sensei caring about the others. Makito struggles to remind his siblings of their love. Family triumphs in the end, they kill the demon and have a barbecue. I really enjoy this part where they dodge the hit because this is very much like a superhero all or nothing fight kind of show. Either an attack hits everybody or it misses everybody. So I really enjoyed seeing them like dip under it and then everyone else gets hit behind them. And I was like, oh, so you can do that. I also love an alcoholic villain. He's like, hey, I was going to kill you guys, but I'm out of sake, so bye. So their bond gets cut. And everybody moves out. Makito is not handling this well, and I think that's because he's not the hopeful one. I think Hoka would have handled this situation a lot better because 
The correct move emotionally is to be like, it's a magic spell, we're gonna fix it, they'll all move back in. But he's taking this very personally. This is so good though. Kai can't get a place because he's still in high school, so he has to go home. And he's just like, don't talk to me, I'll be in my room. So good. I'm very anti-burning things, burning pictures, burning old love letters. Every time someone does that in a movie, I'm like, um, excuse me, you're gonna wanna read those again in 10 years because they're a fun artifact. Like, what are you doing? But most importantly, the monster said he cut their bond, like their love for each other. He didn't say, I made all four of them cold, inconsiderate a-holes, which is what you would have to be to just sort of stand there with a tartly look on your face while someone destroys a photo album. Because I'm still a person, right? And as a person, I have the logical ability to recognize that photo album means something to someone and you're destroying it just because you're a dick. Like, it's not hard to pick which side you stand on in that instance. I'd be like, well, I don't really care about the guy, but it's fucked up that you're burning his photo album just because you can. We love a fourth wall break. The ghost of a pop star is being used by a demon to lure civilians to their death with a siren song. Subasa spends approximately two minutes with her and they fall madly in love. Which I get on her part, but I don't know why Subasa's being so impulsive. The wizards must defeat the demon and save the woman's soul. Then Subasa's all sad and stuff. I know the whole point of a siren is that the song makes it so that it doesn't seem weird that they're like, come kill yourself on the rocks. But it this is weird. She's all in white with her little white harp and she's with the white curtains and why is that gazebo right next to that lake in the middle of nowhere? Like, I don't know. It seems suspicious to me enough that I'd be like, this is suspicious. Nice song though. Subasa's all in though. He's like, it's not suspicious at all. You're awesome. <laughs> Did Mamie just insult Nye and May? Because I will jump into the TV and kill him for the wizards. We're going to take the fact that all of the scenes between Tsubasa and this woman are like a fever dream and just kind of like set it over there and not discuss it and get to the more important part that all of the scenes between them are wildly awkward and it feels like everything that happens doesn't make any sense. Like, why is he just like, I want to hear your real voice. And then they have like a magical frolic through the field in their own mindscape while she's singing a beautiful song for him. And it's true love as they sit under a tree. Like, what is happening here? Again, illogically badass based on nothing but willpower. He literally gets demorphed by an explosion, but he's unscathed. He's unscathed. He's just like, I don't care. And then he casts a spell that everyone was just like, that spell literally won't work. And he's like, I don't care. And he casts a spell and it works. Like, I love it. I love it. It was amazing. It was beautiful. Thank you, Subasa. Hikaru can pretend that he is pleased because Subasa has shown his wizardry prowess and is going to be all legendary and shit. But I know he's pleased because Subasa's ghost girlfriend disappeared and now he doesn't have competition for Subasa's attention. A demon steals Hoka's memories, regressing her to one year in the past before she became a wizard. This is initially really annoying for everyone until they remember Hoka's super cool and she'll help them fight even if she has no idea what's going on. I just love that he's like 2005, that's all. I love Hoka's old fiance. I'm so glad to see him. I'm so glad to see him, but I'm really upset to hear that they have broken up because they were the perfect couple. I stan Hoka and whatever his name is. He's adorable, okay? With his little Hawaiian shirt and his glasses, his fucked up hair and his camera, and he's all giddy and bad. They're meant to be together. There's not normally a bed in this room. This room is like a library with a table and a desk in it, and there is not normally a bed. But every time someone gets hurt, suddenly there's a bed. 
So they can be like right in the middle of the action, laying there and be like, oh, oh no, I'm hurt. Right, while everyone's talking. Do they have a bed that they just keep in like a side closet just to bring out when someone gets hurt really bad? I fucking love when they like jump through the air and transform into Zords. Like they're flying on their little magic air motorcycles and then they're just like schwa pose through a magical thing that I just made and then I turn into a giant robot and then I punch somebody and I'm just like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen anyone do. It's a cliffhanger. Will they defeat the monster before Hoka loses her memory again? Bum bum bum. Well, thank you for tuning in. I hope you're having a magical December. I'll see you in two weeks. And until then, I gotta call my magic train and get out of here.